So, welcome to this uh, presentation on solid waste management in rural areas. And uh, you can ask what is this presentation about? This is about attitude towards waste in India, steps involved in waste management, if a gram panchayat has to take on the challenge of waste management, tasks within waste management function. So, these are the things we will be covering in this session. And uh, we are aware that domestic waste is becoming a matter of serious concern in gram panchayats. And there are estimates by the Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation that solid waste generated in rural areas has grown to be 0.3 to 0.4 million tons per day. And this is more complex because of the nature of uh, waste people generate these days. It is becoming more and more complex to handle. All these fall in the lap of gram panchayats to handle. Now, does the gram panchayat have the capacity to handle? That is the problem. So, waste management is one of the complex problems that panchayats are supposed to deal with. And uh, the solution in many places if we see the solution people think or the gram panchayat they think is dumping or just, just dispose or burn or, or bury them. That is what we see like we see in the picture here. Right. So, dumping is no solution, burying is no solution or, or burning is no solution. And the other solution we have is hide it away somewhere, hide it away from eyesight, that is all, that is done. That is what we think it is not, right. So, uh, in some panchayas, uh, interestingly we have noticed also that they have tried to put in system, place system like the, the waste bin you see here of course, blocking the drainage there and uh, maybe they thought it should not come on the road. So, maybe, so they wanted to keep it away, but they have blocked the drainage that is one. The other is you notice here that they are not using the dustbin there and uh, the garbage is all around there, right. And uh, that is one. The other side you see the waste management system put in place, the waste collection vehicles in the panchayats not being used or once got repaired and there is no way to get it back again to uh, task. Right. So, and uh, wherever they have tried to put in place a system also, it has not been with proper planning. So, what can be done now? That is the question. What can be done now? The solution is not unknown. The solution is put in place a proper waste management system. Put in place a proper waste management system, a system for waste collection, transport and disposal. And there needs to be end to end planning and sustaining it on a daily basis, on a day to day basis, that is that's required. So, can it be the civic responsibility of the Gram Panchayat or can we go with some kind of a business model or with some public private partnership that is workable or practicable within a Gram Panchayat? We need to uh, analyze these things. So, we, when we think of waste management in a Gram Panchayat or, or even in a municipality for example, and what it entails was what waste management, solid waste management entails. We need to think about a survey, waste survey, so that you get to know the amount of waste generated. We will go in uh, depth about it a little later. And then next is preparing the community, community preparation. And then the logistics required. And then what are the technologies and technicalities that we need to be aware of, we need to put in place. And then the financial management. All the, so, solid waste management entails all these. And uh, let us take number one, waste survey. When we, when we say waste survey, what do we mean by waste survey? Ident identify the sources of waste. In other words, we can say the waste generators. Who are all the waste generators in a given panchayat? It can be the households, it can be the shops, it can be the marketplace, it can be some institutions there, it can be schools, it can be a hospital, clinic, right? So, identify the sources of waste. Estimate the total quantum of waste generated per day, per week, per month and what are the types of waste generated? What are the various types of waste generated and quantum of waste generated by type and assess the existing practice of disposal. What is the existing practice of uh, waste management or waste disposal? And past failure, if any, maybe they, they tried before, maybe they tried before and failed also, it, it happens in some places. So, past failure, if any, and the reasons for the failure and plan and prepare the community, right. And we need to plan and prepare the community also simultaneously to make them accept to the proposal of 
setting in place or putting in place a waste management system. So let us see what are the various types. I, I mentioned about types of waste, right? We need to classify waste and we need to know what are the various types of waste generated. One type we can say is that the, the one you see in the picture, the kitchen refuse such as vegetable peels, fruits, flowers, eggshells, tea leaves including leftover food, meat, bone, leaves, garden shrubs and other agricultural waste. Right? This is one, one type which we call wet waste or we call biodegradable waste. This is one. The next we have is dry waste. By dry waste you see in the picture we have plastics, papers, cardboards, shampoo bottles, empty cans, tins, toothpaste, tube, one out toothbrush, milk covers, oil covers, glass bottles, pet bottles, broken toys, caps of mineral water bottles, iron pieces and so on, right. All these we call dry waste. This is another, another type we can say. We have third category we have or hazardous waste and uh, hazardous waste you can, you can see the picture, you can understand what, what do we call the hazardous waste. Used batteries, household chemicals, cleaners, fused bulbs, tubes, broken mirror and ceramic items, residual paint into indoor and farm pesticides, grease, spray cans, shoe polish, old medicines and other pharmaceutical items, syringes, needles, shorts, blades, rusted tins, all these, all these that you see in the picture, right. So this, these are the various types of waste we generally see in a, uh, in a village. And so the first thing is that we need to go for a waste survey and uh, we have to know the types of waste generated and by quantum, by quantity how much waste is generated. And the next is get down to preparing the community, community preparation or we can call community education. How do we prepare the community? So the first thing is that if, if the community agrees to segregate waste, for example as kitchen waste, dry waste, hazardous waste or, or wet waste, dry waste and hazardous waste, if they classify them into three different bins and hand it over the to the panchayat that itself is a is a great thing that itself i mean that is where we need to see the first success for any waste management program right so community preparation is number one and uh, the problem is complex when it comes to waste management but the solution is simple because if people if community members agree if households agree to segregate waste into wet dry and hazardous that solves most of the problem, right. So wet waste we have, dry waste we have, hazardous waste we have. If we segregate them, wet waste can go for composting or, or for biomethane plants, dry waste can go for recycling and reuse and hazardous waste can go for appropriate treatment accordingly. That's as the, as the case may be. So is it real, this is one of the questions often asked, what is a zero waste community? Is it really possible at all? Is it really possible at all to have a zero waste community? And what do we mean by zero waste community at all? If what ends up in the landfill as residual waste, the, the, the residual, the final residual waste, it, if it did not exceed 10% of the total waste generated in a community, you can call yourself a zero waste community, right? I do not, I, I do not know if it is really possible to reach 100% and if we can, if we can classify waste as uh, where to dry hazardous and they are properly dealt with about 90 percent are dealt with like that and we have been left with a 10 percent residual waste and that goes to the landfill then even in that case you can call yourself a zero waste community right and for this to get grounded we need to prepare the panchayats we need to prepare the panchayat panchayat is the institution uh, constitutionally recognized institution that is supposed to take care of the sanitation aspects in a gram panchayat on a village area. So we need to have a special bylaw for example, a bylaw for solid waste management like we have bylaw for drinking water supply in a gram panchayat level. We need to also have a bylaw for solid waste management and they are like rules what you can do, what you cannot do. As community members, how do you segregate waste and what time the waste collection vehicle will come, such things we can we can have and is it that the people or the or the households are supposed to pay for it or is it for free, right? What is the arrangement? Such things go into a bylaw and so we can have a bylaw for solid waste management. And we need to also have the logistics required, right? When it comes to collecting waste, you need logistics like for example, we saw earlier the three bins, right? The, the one meant for uh, wet waste, dry waste and then hazardous waste. We need to have, we need to have these uh, 
bins for the community and is it that the community they are uh, going to buy for themselves, households they are going to buy for themselves or is it, or is it that the panchayat is going to supply that is one. The other is we need to have also the collection waste collection vehicles, we need to have waste collection vehicles right. So, this we need to make arrangements accordingly. Let us say for example, to cover about 300 households we may need one, one, one uh, uh, tricycle for example, two workers and one tricycle. So, if it is, if it is 900 households we may need about three, three tricycles like this. So, we need to have such logistics in place. After collection we need to go for like this boy is doing here, segregation of waste. He has collected waste and then he is going for segregation of waste and this is especially the dry waste he is segregating here because the understanding is wet waste goes for composting. And uh, here in the uh, picture you see the wet waste after it decomposed and it is being uh, uh, sieved through a, through a sieve. Other materials required like for example, you, need, you may need a push cart, you may need uh, some collection bins and the workers may need some uh, uh, gloves, some uniform things like this. So, these are all some of the logistics that you need to uh, put in place a waste management system, right. So, if you, if you just list out it might be something like this, land to construct a segregation shed. Suppose you want to segregate waste, you may need a segregation shed. So, you need land to construct a segregation shed plus a composting yard or, or vermi bed you may need and uh, setting up a compost shed and uh, segregation yard that requires land and containers for households, tricycles, uniforms, tools and equipments. So, all these things might be required, we may have to plan for these things. And, uh, Number four, okay, we go around collecting from house to house all these waste, segregated waste, that is all fine, but how do we uh, manage that? What are the technologies available? That is, one is uh, when you have your wet waste, we go for composting. We go for composting and uh, composting, it can be centralized composting or common composting or it can be at the household level composting also. And mostly, we advocate, we recommend the uh, households to go for household level composting. If people can uh, compost at the household level all the wet waste or kitchen waste that they have from the house daily, that is a great thing because uh, uh, to that extent it reduces the amount of waste that the manchayat has to handle. All right. So, we usually recommend or we, we recommend people to go mostly for household level composting. If there is a need for going for common uh, or centralized collection, then we need to have centralized system and there are different methodologies. There are different methodologies also like methods also, technologies also available like vermi composting, NADAP composting, windrow composting. We have all these uh, uh, technologies available for common centralized composting and similarly for household level also there are um, uh, uh, techniques like pot composting, tub composting, kamba composting. And uh, even we, there are um, uh, households in Kerala that go for biogas production just from the kitchen waste they get, right. And there are also biomethanation plants we can go for, right. This is, these are some of the pictures from the, some of the pictures from the household level composting, household level composting and they, they compost. Uh, with the two bins here, you can see with two bins and one, one when one bin is uh, full and when it is becoming compost, the other one they have started using this side. And uh, final product you see like this, the compost uh, prepared at home, it comes like this, which can be used for plants in the house. And uh, this is uh, centralized composting and you see here the vermi composting. Right, this is vermi composting, and this is also vermi compost, and this is NADAP compost. This is uh, windrow, windrow compost, and here also the small one you see windrow compost. And the windrow compost, this is the easiest method of uh, composting, and also uh, depending on the the manpower we have, we can go for amount of waste we get. We can uh, choose what technology we want to go for. Some might want to go for vermi composting, some might want to go for NADAP composting, some might want to go for windrow composting, things like that. Right. And here uh, you can see the uh, cooking gas being produced from kitchen waste, from wet waste, cooking gas being produced. And this is recyclables, whatever wet waste we are, we are composting or we are sending them to biomethane plants and the remaining dry waste, from the dry waste we can recover. We can recover bottles, plastics, cans and cardboards, papers, all these together we can, we can collect and there are uh, 
waste recyclers and they are ready to buy them and they can be consigned to them they can be sent to them for recycling and the reuse these are some of the reuse interesting reuse ideas we came across and just you can have a look at the pictures here see uh, the old tires how nicely they have put to use and the kurkure package that we see how nicely they have made a ba basket out of that and uh, the pencil when a child sharpens its pencil the residual waste there how nicely they have used for a school project right so uh, reuse ideas are plenty that can be put to use also and there are three important considerations i would say when it comes to waste management one is about the technology that we use what technology are we going to use is it at the household level or community level is it centralized or decentralized that is one the other is how about the funds and the third is institution gram panchayat does it have the capacity to handle there are there are no depth of technologies there are plenty of technologies available there are also handbooks manuals and sops hand plenty of them available and training is also available and uh, the number number two funds when it comes to funds there are two things we need to bear in mind one is the capital cost the other is the operational cost right so capital cost in swachh bharat mission we have up to 20 lakhs they they provide for solid waste management uh, projects and the institution yes of course we have uh, gram panchayats all over so that's no problem so gram panchayat can take over the waste management uh, projects so when it comes to the details of financial provision we can just uh, take a look at this for gram panchayat with less than 150 households about 10 lakhs are available from uh, swachh bharat mission and if the households are uh, about 300 households you get about 12 lakhs and for 500 households you get up 15 lakhs and for more than 500 households you get 20 lakhs so this is uh, with a central state share of 75 25 so this is available for for capital investment and also for construction of waste management infrastructure like segregation shed vermi bed etc we can use also narega workers for that purpose so there we also save money by using narega workers i mentioned before when it comes to cost when it comes to funds there are capital cost and operational cost and uh, some gram panchayats have uh, used this uh, swachh bharat mission funds plus they have got additional support from drda or the district collector or through some csr fund for capital investment and when it comes to operational expenses that is the uh, salary to be paid to the workers and the vehicle maintenance things like that that is a real challenge and that has to be raised locally through uh, user fees or things like that so this this is one challenge for uh, the panchayats so precisely there is a favorable policy environment government of india with the swachh bharat mission there is a uh, favorable policy environment and uh, there are also technologies available in plenty and there are funds made available and uh, narega workers can be used also for uh, creating infrastructure required for waste management but the gps have to the gram panchayats have to find their own means of meeting the operational expenses that is uh, one thing that uh, they need to really plan and the, at the gram panchayat level there is a need for a detailed bylaw that can regulate the behavior of the community that th that can regulate the uh, behavior of the household so that they don't throw waste here and there and uh, every morning there must be proper waste collection uh, system uh, operational and there is also capacity building required at the panchayat level and meeting the operational how does a panchayat meet the operational expenses one can be a flat rate of 30 rupees a month every household must pay or 50 rupees a month every household uh, should pay and uh, all the shops may pay about 50 rupees or 100 rupees a month like that some system can be put in place flat rate system or pay the second is pay as you throw depending on the quantum of waste you throw you pay if the quantum of waste is less you pay 30 rupees if the quantum of waste generated is more pay 50 rupees 70 rupees like that and then uh, it is also possible converting waste into wealth and uh, converting waste into wealth means that you have collected all the dry waste from the dry waste you have the recyclables the recyclables can be sold and that can also serve the purpose of meeting the expenses incurred in, in uh, the in the system operation so to sum up i would say uh it is not about composting and uh, this is something i wanted to emphasize because in some of the places when we visit uh when we want to visit clean villages they are uh, uh, overwhelmed to show uh, in a mode to show 
the the compost being made there or vermi compost or whatever compost that they are making and the question is about clean villages it is not about composting so technologies in other places we say we see technologies being put to use and there are plenty of technologies being put to use and uh, technologies per se technologies as such does not solve the problem of waste that we need to understand also it is not just technology we need to have end to end planning solid waste management requires complete end to end planning and complete support from the community and the proper community education proper community preparation all these are required and it involves community preparation training of sanitation workers logistics organizing funds being in touch with the merchants who deal in scraps and recyclables waste treatment technologies and so on so it is not just about uh, composting it is not just about technologies it is a whole lot end to end planning required so uh, one error we noticed in many places when we when we visit that is the too much emphasis given on the technologies and very little emphasis on institution management in the sense kept building the capacity of the panchayats to be able to handle this that is institution that is missing and number 2 the community management community preparation that is uh, missing and the finan proper financial management especially the how do we meet the operational expenses the day to day expenses the monthly expenses when it comes to uh, managing solid waste in the gram panchayat these are things that are paid very little attention so this requires uh tilting so yeah, the solid waste management thing in a gram panchayat uh it is possible it is very much possible it is very much required once the villages become open defecation free the next atom is to make them clean villages by putting in place proper waste management system for that this session uh sh should have helped and uh, thank you very much for this opportunity and these are some of the useful references maybe you can you can go through and uh, if there are any questions you are welcome to contact thank you very much